My name is Margaret. I'm 42 years old. Today marks the anniversary of my beloved husband Alfred's death. I want to share a story that happened at Alfred's funeral. We were a loving couple, always close since our marriage. Just an ordinary, childless couple. We had always wanted children since the beginning of our marriage. But due to reasons with both Alfred and myself, sadly, it never happened. It was indeed tough when we decided not to have children, but we vowed to overcome it together. Margaret, married and a housewife, I can hardly believe it. Why is that? Because back in our student days, you were never interested in guys and always followed me around. The one who said this to me was Virginia, my friend since college. We've known each other for over 10 years. Alfred is kind of plain too, right? Are you really okay with him? That's rude. He's kind and always puts me first. Virginia has always been the type to speak her mind immediately. Maybe that's why she used to cause a lot of trouble in relationships. But she also had a kind side. When I suffered heartbreak due to a cheating lover, that's terrible! Good riddance, Margaret. There are plenty of other good men out there. She would comfort me, and when I lost my wallet and struggled financially for a month, it's only natural to help a friend. She would lend me living expenses. Probably, for better or worse, she's just honest. People like that exist. I thought Virginia would be nice if she didn't say unnecessary things. That's what I believed. When I got married at 32, she was still single, showing no signs of a partner. I'll live out my life single. I'm not like Margaret, satisfied with just one man. She would say things like that. Sometimes her remarks hurt my feelings, but I didn't think she meant any harm. So I didn't take it too seriously and continued our friendship. But she began to change little by little after I got married. I thought she was honest for better or worse, but she started showing only her worst side. One day, while enjoying lunch with Virginia, I casually mentioned that Alfred had been coming home late recently, busy with work. Isn't Alfred cheating? She suddenly blurted out. What? Why would you say that? I asked. Come on, being busy at work so soon after getting married? You have to be suspicious. I think he's just really busy. Margaret, you're too naive. Are you sure you're okay as a wife? She started taking a mocking attitude. I'm worried about you, Margaret. Remember, you were cheated on during our student days. Indeed, I've had such experiences in the past, but I trust Alfred. I won't doubt him over something like this. Moreover, I thought it was insensitive to suggest cheating just after getting married. But I'm sure Virginia was just worried about me. The infidelity did happen, just like Virginia said. Thinking back on the kindness Virginia showed me before I was married, I chose to interpret her concern positively at the time. Thank you, Virginia, but it's okay. I trust Alfred. That's what I said to reassure Virginia. But Margaret, you're just that kind of woman, huh? Don't come crying to me if you end up regretting it after he cheats. Just that kind of woman. Those spiteful words from Virginia stung like thorns in my chest at the time. And, Now that you're married, Margaret, you're done as a woman, right? They say marriage ages women quickly. I'm glad I'm single. Virginia relentlessly looked down on me, continuously talking about how happy and blessed she was to be single. That wasn't the Virginia I knew. A bit blunt, but truly a kind-hearted and considerate friend. That's what I thought, but it seems I was wrong. She started looking at me with pity, as if my marriage was unfortunate, as if to belittle me. I began to question whether to continue this friendship. But it's not so easy to just end a relationship. We often went out for lunch or tea, and it was hard to just naturally drift apart. It didn't seem like it would go smoothly, so what should I do? These were the unpleasant days I spent, but then a decisive incident occurred that led me to cut ties with her. 
What? You're not having kids? During a tea outing initiated by Virginia, I shared our decision to live as a childless couple. I hadn't intended to talk about it. But at that moment, I was feeling down and wanted someone to listen. In hindsight, it was a thoughtless move. That's unbelievable! That's so unfair to Alfred! What's the point of getting married, then? Margaret, you really are shallow, aren't you? Don't you even understand what marriage means? It's not just about being together, right? Instead of comforting me like she did in our student days, she lectured me. When I was heartbroken over a lover's infidelity, It's terrible! Good for you that you broke up with him! There's someone better out there for you, Margaret! She consoled me, and I had thought she would surely comfort me in this moment of pain. Unfit as a wife? Poor Alfred? She continued to reproach me. I couldn't take it any more. I was considering whether to continue the friendship, even though she had been kind during the hardest times. But at that moment, I reached a breaking point. Please, just stop meddling in my marital affairs. I found myself raising my voice at her. Margaret? Virginia, I no longer want anything to do with you. This is the last time. I've tolerated so much from you, but I can't bear this. Goodbye. I left her stunned in the cafe. I didn't want to see her face ever again. In the winter when I was 38, I severed all ties with her. Since then, Alfred and I lived leisurely while saving for our retirement, just the two of us. At first, I thought being a childless couple would be lonely, but I realized there are many joys to be had with Alfred. Traveling together, enjoying fancy meals, it was Alfred who made me see this. Because of him, I could smile and enjoy each day. I was so grateful to have married him. But then one day, a phone call during work plunged me into despair. Margaret! Oh, Susan, what's the matter? It was Susan, my sister-in-law. Stay calm, the thing is... She told me Alfred had passed away in a traffic accident. He had been visiting his hometown for a family event since the day before. I couldn't take time off work, so I let Alfred go alone. I never imagined something like this would happen. There was no time to grieve with the wake and then the funeral following. And as the funeral was nearing its end, as I sat vacantly in the family section, Margaret, there you are! A woman approached me. Virginia, dressed in an ill-fitting, oversized morning dress, stood there. It was an unexpected reunion after about four years. I hadn't informed Virginia about Alfred's death, but perhaps she heard from someone and came. Virginia, you came. Thank you. Well, yeah, there's something I need to tell you. It was the first time Virginia referred to me as you in such a way, and I was a bit surprised. Right, we had a falling out and hadn't spoken since. Perhaps that's why her words sounded so pointed. But the next moment, I was even more shocked by what Virginia said. I'm pregnant with Alfred's child about four months along. Excuse me? Why would Virginia be carrying Alfred's child? I was utterly confused. Sorry I kept quiet. I've been involved with Alfred for about five months now, and I recently found out I'm pregnant. I thought I should let you know, especially now. Wait, that's a lie, right? The shock of hearing about infidelity, especially from a former friend, at such a time? It's no lie. If you don't believe me, ask Alfred. Though, that's impossible now, Virginia said, looking at the portrait of Alfred with a spiteful smile. How could she smile at a time like this? It's beyond disrespectful. Overwhelmed with anger and sorrow, I collapsed to the ground. Virginia looked down at me with a sneer. I told you, didn't I? Isn't Alfred cheating? But you got angry instead, telling me not to meddle in your marriage. Oh, well, I warned you. It's a lie. It has to be a lie. 
please tell me it's not true. In my heart, I pleaded with the smiling Alfred in the portrait. But cruelly, no answer came back. Of course. Well, now you understand, right, Margaret? When you're complacent as a wife, you'll end up hurt. Virginia's mocking tone and expression began to stir whispers among the crowd. I couldn't let her disrupt the solemnity of the funeral. As I attempted to lead Virginia outside, Susan, having witnessed the exchange, put her arm around my shoulder and whispered, It's okay. Calm down. Then she took Virginia outside on my behalf, and the three of us, Susan, Virginia, and I, began to talk outside. What's the meaning of this? Susan demanded with a sharp gaze. I mean it in the literal sense. I'm pregnant with Alfred's child. Virginia then started detailing her relationship with Alfred. How it began with secret consultations about his troubles with me, leading to their affair. Alfred wanted a child, but since I couldn't provide one, he wished Virginia to bear his child instead. He had been planning to divorce me eventually, she claimed. The multitude of shocking revelations from Virginia nearly made me faint on the spot. But in contrast, Susan was still glaring intensely at Virginia, and then spoke up. Your name's Virginia, right? Yes, so? Without breaking her glare, Susan revealed something unexpected. It was you who sent those tasteless messages to Alfred, bothering him. Confused, Virginia replied, What do you mean? Susan pulled out her mobile phone and showed me a message. It read, Margaret is a cheating, hopeless case. Such a wife doesn't suit you. I can be a better spouse and bear your child. All from Virginia's account to Alfred. I was stunned. What is this? Margaret didn't know, but Alfred was really troubled by it, Susan explained. Alfred had been harassed by these messages from someone claiming to be my friend. He didn't want to destroy our friendship or worry me, so he consulted Susan instead of me. If these stalker-like messages continue, we'll go to the police, he had said, and it seemed to have stopped. Is this your revenge showing up at the funeral? Don't you have any decency? Susan accused. It was clear that Virginia was the culprit. The messages were from her account. Angered by the exposure, Virginia lashed out at Susan. What's with this older lady? But Susan was unfazed. Rude woman, you're quite the older lady yourself, aren't you? Both Virginia and I are indeed 42. Certainly an age appropriate to be called older ladies. These messages are a setup. Where's the proof I sent them? And I am really pregnant with Alfred's baby. While it's not impossible for a 42-year-old to be pregnant, I remembered something crucial as I saw her visibly shaken. Tell me, Virginia, is the pregnancy real? She snapped back. Of course, it's not a lie. Hearing her response, I slowly revealed... Alfred was sterile. We couldn't have children. That's why we gave up on having any. Eh? Virginia's voice faltered. I paused before continuing. I'll ask again. Is it truly Alfred's child? I wondered why I hadn't remembered this until now. Maybe I was more shaken by Alfred's sudden passing than I realized. It is true! Virginia's voice was fraught with panic. Really? Then will you accompany me to the hospital right now? If Alfred has fathered a child, it would be a medical miracle. I want to introduce you to a doctor. Virginia couldn't hide her agitation at my words. Shall we go to the hospital together? It might be a case worth presenting at a conference. That's a bit... Why not? You're pregnant, right? Or is it a lie? You wouldn't lie at a funeral, would you? You wouldn't do such a thing, right, Virginia? Maybe I was becoming unhinged. All my pent-up emotions were pouring out, and I fixed her with an intense stare, determined not to let her escape. Susan cooled me down with gentle words. Margaret, it's impossible. Alfred cherished you above all else. 
He wouldn't be involved with such a woman. He wasn't that frivolous. How dare you? Who's being rude here? Disrupting a dear departed's funeral? Your actions are beyond reprehensible. Susan was just as vehement in her condemnation of Virginia. Hey. As we argued, some friends from university approached us from behind. They were also my friends. Virginia, you're not really pregnant, are you? What? Don't just barge in like that! Virginia was flustered by the sudden interjection, but my friends continued undeterred. Because, Virginia, you were happily going out drinking yesterday, right? Talking about celebrating something. We were invited too, but we declined because it was the night before the funeral. It's a lie that you're pregnant, right? Normal people don't go drinking if they're carrying a child. Why lie about something so unbelievable? It's not even a funny joke. Pressured by me, Susan, and our friends, Virginia finally confessed. Because Margaret's always seemed so happy. I just wanted to ruin it. Always looking like you've never had any trouble. And here I am always unhappy. With that, Virginia collapsed to the ground, sobbing. Further probing revealed that the affair with Alfred and the pregnancy were lies. She admitted to disliking me since our student days, simply because I seemed happy. She was the one who arranged for me to be cheated on and even stole my wallet. All the kindness I thought I saw from Virginia was orchestrated. Realizing how naive I had been to interpret her actions as kind, I felt foolish. All her actions were driven by hatred towards me. Always happier than me, and that's the problem, she said. I replied calmly, now knowing her kindness was a facade, feeling nothing towards her. Happiness. Maybe you're right. Virginia, if you had the capacity to love rather than hate, maybe you could have been happy too. We parted on bad terms, but I always considered you a friend. But not anymore. I thought we were friends, but I was wrong. Please leave. I don't want Alfred's funeral to be tainted any further. As I spoke coldly, Virginia momentarily fell silent, then seemed to snap out of it. I'm so sorry. I can't believe what I've done. And then she began to deeply apologize. I've always been so envious of you, Margaret, wishing for your unhappiness all this time, but to think you still considered me a friend. Virginia was sobbing, desperately apologizing, but my overwhelming desire was for her to just disappear. Sensing my feelings, my friend spoke up as if voicing my thoughts. Virginia, you should leave now. Any more and you'll be troubling Margaret. Overwhelmed, she quickly left. After her departure, I felt a sudden release of tension. Margaret, are you okay? Yes, Susan. I'm sorry for everything. As I bowed my head, my sister-in-law shook her head, telling me to look up. Alfred truly loved you, Margaret. Please remember that. Susan's words brought tears to my eyes. As the representative of the family, I needed to be strong. As I bowed my head, my sister-in-law shook her head, telling me to look up. Alfred's time with Margaret was precious. Just meeting and being with Margaret was a blessing for him, they said. Their words moved me to tears, and my friends added, Cherish your memories with Alfred. We're here for you if you need anything. As my friends gently embraced me, I broke down in tears once more. Everything had happened so quickly, yet the kindness of those around me had been my salvation. It made me realize, as Alfred had, that no one is ever truly alone. The funeral eventually concluded in a more serene atmosphere. After the incident, Virginia became a topic of conversation and was completely shunned by all her friends. Though, in truth, many hadn't thought highly of her to begin with and simply used this as a reason to fade away. However, months later, unexpectedly, I received a wedding announcement from Virginia. Despite everything, she reached out and the invitation included. Margaret, can we make amends now? 
We're friends, right? It confirmed to me that cutting ties with her was the right decision. All the friends she invited, including myself, declined to attend. Inviting someone in mourning to a wedding was in itself inconsiderate, but it seemed beyond her to understand such norms. Eventually, her wedding was called off due to the lack of attendees. Her obsession with happiness must have been deeply shaken by the cancellation. Regardless, her rushed marriage, likely spurred by her fear of being left behind, served as a fitting repercussion for disrupting Alfred's funeral. And today, on the anniversary of his death, I look at Alfred's portrait and think, when it's my time to join him, I'll bring a wealth of stories to share. I'll bring so many memories so he won't be bored. I must live my life to the fullest for both of us. Margaret, this is Alfred's favorite leaf pie from that shop. Offer it to him, would you? Thank you, Susan. I'm always causing you trouble. Anyway, he really does look happy. It was a good life, wasn't it? The photo used for Alfred's portrait was taken during one of our trips, capturing his happy face. Seeing his joyful expression, Susan wiped away her tears. I'll live happily for both of us, I assured her, placing a hand on her shoulder. I won't cry anymore because I have so many supportive people around me.